Welcome back to Overtime. Just a short while ago, I sat down with General C.Q. Brown at our CFO Council Summit. He is the new chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, America's highest ranking military official, and the top military advisor to the president. This was his first broadcast interview in the position. He was sworn in October 1st. Hamas attacked Israel just six days later. I asked for his assessment of that conflict as it has been unfolding, even amid this recent ceasefire of the last few days. When you look at what's going on in the, in the Middle East is uh, the aspect of what we've wanted to do is make sure that we, um, we support Israel's right to defend itself at the same time think about um, minimizing uh, civilian casualties, humanitarian assistance, um, how we protect our forces, and then also looking at uh, not letting this conflict expand broader in the region. And uh, this is part of the reason why you, you saw uh, shortly after 7 October, we moved in a fair amount of capability. Uh, one was to uh, show our support to Israel, but also to defer, uh, deter a, a broader conflict within the region. Will we see more U.S. forces deployed to the area? Well, over time, we, I mean, this is something we talk about all the time in, in one of the areas, and, and without getting ahead of you know, decisions, but uh, we look at uh, our force posture, not only in the Middle East, but we also, uh, that's one of my responsibilities as, as a chairman is, I'm not just looking at, you know, one crisis. What I'm looking at uh, is really across what's happening around the world to ensure that we have capability and options uh, in my role as a, as a chairman, providing, uh, you know, advice to the, uh, the president, the secretary of defense, and the security council. Uh, I want to make sure that I've looked at all the options. Now, we also discussed U.S. troops in Syria as Iranian proxies have launched attacks on U.S. military outposts in the region, and we've seen U.S. counter strikes uh, in response. We also discussed Ukraine, where the senior military official there has used the word stalemate recently in an interview, and we discussed as the U.S. runs out of current funding to send weapons and other aid to Ukraine, we're waiting on a supplemental to pass in Congress, what he anticipates in terms of that conflict over the coming year. In order for us to continue to uh, support um, not just Ukraine but ourselves, is to get in the budget on time. And the continuing resolutions do not help us actually provide predictability, not only for us but also for uh, the defense industrial base. Um, if you have consistent, steady funding, it's easier for you to write contracts, bring on workforce, build out facilities to bring capability, um, not just for us but also for our allies and partners. Uh, I think the one thing that I've found is that. Uh, a lot of our allies and partners like U.S. equipment. Uh, that depends on a U.S. defense industrial base, and that's also dependent on, on constant funding. Of course, that has raised the question about stockpiles and whether the U.S. industrial base can keep pace with the demand it is seeing right now. He said yes, and about how the chairman is balancing the readiness and modernization of the military for the future versus the needs of the current operational force, given this current geopolitical landscape, which, of course, brought into focus the pacing threat, that is China. Your assessment of the dynamics between the U.S. and China right now? Well, I would say, um, you know, the president just met with Xi Jinping. Um, the fact that the, there's a, they're open to military-to-military -to -military dialogue. Um, is that happening? What will it look like? Well, uh, it's yet to be, you know, um, it still needs to be, the details need to be worked out, um, but I expect at some point that that, that dialogue will, uh, will occur. Uh, I think that dialogue is important because it helps to prevent miscalculation. Uh, but I also think through the aspect, it's not just um, what we do as a military, it's what we do um, across what I would say all the instruments of power, what we do uh, diplomatically, what we do economically, uh, how we play in the information space. And, um, you know, the economic piece plays a key role in um, deterrence and how we work with our allies and partners. And if you think about the Indo-Pacific, how much uh, activity goes, how intertwined we are economically uh, with the Indo-Pacific, um, any type of military conflict will really disrupt the world economy. Okay, I'm not an economist, but I'm just kind of thinking, based on what I've uh, been able to study, is that has an impact. And, and that's why it's so important that all those play together and we think about it more uh, holistically, not just from military. So we play a role as a military, um, but we want to be the, you know, a small M to a capital D, capital I, capital E.